Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Today we welcome any visitors to our parish. Today is the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. May each of us have recourse to the powerful prayers of the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. We offer today's Mass for the family of Leo Higgins. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, 623, Morning Has Broken, 623. Thank you. 
reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your, your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved, and in those who know you, you re rebuke temerity. But though you are a master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O oh Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O oh Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God of merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and bounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God.
Aleluia, Aleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds uh, all through the wheat, and he, they went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull, up, uh, pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Then they uh, let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when fully grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat of flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in a parables. I will announce what has, uh, what has laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowd, he went into the uh, house. The disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said uh, in reply, He who sows good seeds is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the, son, of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the, evil who, uh, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. So, uh, just as weeds are collected and burned with fire, so, with it, uh, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom, all who uh, all whose uh, causes others to sin, and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. If you uh, go back and uh, uh, look at... Uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about uh, uh, Jesus who was uh, uh, teaching about being, being having a yoke put on your shoulders, you will see right before that dialogue, uh, it says uh, and I, that it's really important to understand what we're going through for the next couple of weeks. Jesus begins this whole dialogue that we've been going through the last couple of weeks by turning to God the Father and, and saying to him, I give you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for, uh, give you praise, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one, uh, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. I bring that up because what we are hearing and we're going to be continuing to hear and have been hearing for the last couple of weeks is God and Jesus talking about what is the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes we can get into the parables, you know, just micro uh, focus ourselves on, on the parables and forget to step back and say, well, why is he telling us these parables? What, what, what's the purpose that he's going about telling these, per uh, these parables, these stories? And it is to say to us, not only 2,000 years ago as, as a church, but also 2,000 years later, 
let me tell you what the kingdom of heaven is like. How do you attain the kingdom of heaven? What can I give you so you have a taste of what the kingdom of heaven is all about? And of course, uh, we have the parable now of, uh, this week about uh, the sower of the, the weeds into the field with the, uh, the wheat. Now, nice thing about, like I said, uh, two weeks ago and last week, uh, being in a farming community, it's really nice to know that you know what Jesus is talking about. Again, if you go to New York and Boston and L.A., you know, right where all the riots are, you know, you might make a connection here. They haven't been people of the earth. In other words, they, they don't know what you know. You understand this parable far better than they'll ever understand it. I, I'm always having, especially when I'm back in Boston, having to talk to people that keep a little garden. And I mean, you can't even call it a garden. I, I call it a more of a uh, you know, cemetery plot. It's about three by six, you know, and, and here they're trying to grow tomatoes and, and different things so that they can say that they're people of the earth, but they just don't get it. And you try to reveal it to them and, and their little experience of being in the ground, they, they just can't understand it. As a matter of fact, when it comes to herbicides, you know, their, their answer is, well, what's so hard about just going out in the field and just, uh, you know, uh, pulling, uh, pulling some weeds? How hard can that be? And you as farmers know exactly what the master is talking about in today's uh, gospel, don't you? Oh, Lord, could you imagine a, a whole, your, all your acreage being filled along wheat along with weeds? Man, this is, this, is, this is tragic. This is horrible. And of course, what is the answer supposed to be? And how are we supposed to approach now trying to figure out when we're in this world that is so set in tears and sadness and coronavirus, how do we get through it? And of course, Jesus' answer is, don't worry, let the wheat, the master has, has chosen the absolute perfect seed. You don't have to worry about the wheat. But at the same time, we're going to have to let the wheat grow with the weeds and, and, the, and not to worry that, that everything will be taken care of. Yes, yes, it's going to take a lot more work. And that's the thing I think we need to really pull away from today's gospel message and what we're going to be hearing for the next couple of weeks about the kingdom of heaven. You can't just simply sit back and say, well, I believe that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior, and that, that's all I need to be saved. No, no, no. Jesus teaches us something else, doesn't he? It's not just being passive and, and letting God just save you. It requires us to put some skin in the game. It requires us to get that car on the road and, and to work for it and, and to look forward to it and to, uh, to realize that our work is supposed to be a means of not only salvation for ourselves, but salvation for the world as well. And of course, what we also want to recognize is the second parable that we have here about the, the smallest of seeds, the mustard seed. Now, uh, I don't know if you ever had the experience of looking at a mustard seed, but it is. I mean, it's, it's small, small, small. And like Jesus says, it is so full of potential. There is so much energy that is in this little, little, little seed, this little grain of sand for all practical purposes, that when given its, its opportunity, it will become one of the largest of the trees. It will become a big bush, so much so that birds will come in and nest there and, and be able to get shade and, sh uh, and, and rest in, in this bush. And it, it's not a small little seed. But if we allow that seed just to remain a seed, then it's not going to be able to be able to produce, to take what is potentially there and, and make it a reality. This is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is something that is needed to be grown. And, and we're not going to be afraid to be able to go out those steps down the stairs and go into the world and allow that, that, that seed to grow. And of course, now what Jesus does, now this is what women understand more than men do, because women understand what making bread is all about and how yeast works. Now, now, as you know, I get together with the other priests, and uh, thank goodness I do have priests because they're able to take the city boy and trying to give him some reality here. And one of the priests that we were talking with talked about what a measure was. We have, as we see here, Jesus saying, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman uh, took and mixed with three measures of wheat. Now, a measure from uh, what one of the priests were saying is equal to a bushel basket, a bushel basket of wheat, uh, of, of, of flour. Now, now, you know how big that is. You know, that's a lot of flour. And not only do we have just one bushel basket, but we have three bushel baskets. 
And of course, the yeast needs to penetrate that entire uh, uh, flour mixture and be able to add a little bit of water and get back, hold, you know, stand back because look at what's going to be produced. It's going to be like the blob from, you know, or that, that horror, you know, the science fiction movie, the blob, the thing's just going to grow and grow and grow. And then what you have to go is to beat it back and beat it back so it can grow and grow and grow some more. But not just a little bit, not just for one loaf of bread, but three measures. Again, we have to be people that are willing to work for the kingdom of God. We're going to have to look forward to the kingdom of God and be able to know that the work that we put into being good Christians and good Catholics will have what? The end result. The end result of what the whole purpose of these gospels are hearing about, the kingdom of God. How can I attain heaven? How can I find my ultimate happiness? And it goes back to what Jesus said a few weeks ago, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these, these things from the wise and learned, you have revealed it to the little ones. It is so great that God does share with us little ones, those who are willing to, to be able to say, okay, it's not going to be about me. It's going to be about God and all about God. And I'm going to trust that God knows what he's doing. And I'm going to stand back and allow the this to penetrate, allow us, if another uh, parable he talks about the rain, the rain to penetrate this, this, this clod of dirt. And I'm going to have to ask myself, am I clay or am I going to be receptive to, to the water that God gives us? Allow him to break us up so that the seed of faith not only can be planted, but then can also grow and be able to be the greatest of the bushes that, uh, that, that is out there in that world so that we can give God the praise and the glory that is rightfully his. And of course, always remembering again, no matter what we give, God will never be outdone in love. We have the gospel today where we see Jesus even using the words which are so politically incorrect today. He says, master, there's the master of the house and his slaves. You know, I've heard people when I was back in Boston say, Jesus believed in slavery. Boy, do you just don't want to listen, do you? You don't want to listen to the good news. No, we have to realize, and this is so, it's so important in the 21st century, we have a choice. We can either have one master or another. And if we give up God, who is our master, he is the one who made the tractor, the combine. He's the manufacturer, he's the John Deere, and he probably knows how the universe goes together since he is the master of the universe. He's the creator of the universe. The problem that we have is so often God giving us the gift of free will is that we can choose to be our own master. And of course, we want to say to God, God, you know, he is really clever, but, you know, and we do this in prayer. Let's admit it. We all do this in prayer, don't we, every so often. God, I do believe you to be the creator of the universe, and I give you praise and glory. You know, God, if you do it my way, the universe would be a little bit better off, you know? And of course, it's not supposed to be that way with us. We're not supposed to be the master. The master of this world is the evil one, the devil. He's the divider. And of course, nature abhors a, a vacuum. So we either take God as our master or we take the evil one as our master. We have a choice of who we are going to serve. We are going to be slaves to one or slaves to the other. One thing that we know about God the Father is he takes our, our humility when we do say to God, God, you know what? I'm going to let you be the one since you're the watchmaker, to so you know how the watch is put together. And as a gear, I'm going to do what needs to be done in order to make the watch work. And the God is going to look at us and say, in your humility, you know what? I'm going to raise you from being slaves or servants. And I'm not only just going to call you my friends, but I'm going to call you my, my sons and daughters. I'm going to raise you up. No longer are you slaves but you are going to be adopted sons and daughters of the kingdom of heaven. Again, remembering, God will never be outdone in love. When we allow ourselves to let God penetrate our lives, we allow God's love to touch us and we return that love in service to him. God will never be outdone in that love. 
he will return that love to us 30, 60, and 100 fold. So let us now stand together as servants of God, slaves of God, our master, and profess in one voice as we join the entire world, the body of Christ, and profess our faith as we say in one voice, I believe in one God. Christ our Lord, you taught us how to live. Open your eyes to the light, which is ever ready to enlighten us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations, that they may seek the way that leads to peace, that human rights and freedom may be everywhere respected, and that the world's resources may serve man as you desired. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Mother, the Church, and her leaders, may be faithful ministers of your word, that all our children may be strong in faith and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, care for all who serve in the church as ministers of your word and sacraments, that they may bring your whole family to the unity of which Christ prayed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, giver of life, put an end to abortion and all other offenses against the sanctity of human life. May all nations respect your gift of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all your innumerable, innumerable gifts to our parish families, may these blessings draw us closer to you in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Fulfill the hopes of those who sleep in your peace. Bring them to that final resurrection when you will be all in all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, it is such a great privilege that we are here at your altar praying, joining together the body of Christ and giving you praise and worship this weekend. Now, turning to you, we present to you our petitions, those we have spoken, those that we hold in our hearts, recognizing that you can make perfect what is imperfect in them. Now, trusting you, we present them to you, to our mediator, our master, our Lord, our eldest brother, Jesus Christ, we know lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, 424, How Great Thou Art, 424.
and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Jesus Christ, 
At whose command we celebrate these mysteries? For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. And again, uh, we kind of have a lighter crowd, which makes it a little bit easier for me. Uh, what we'll do is again use the uh, center aisle, and uh, I think I can take care of it while it runs upstairs and gives communion. Uh, but uh, do remember, those that are on the side here, go the long way around. Don't, don't cross over it if you're sharing a pew with someone. If you're, sharing, if you're not sharing a pew, it doesn't make that big of a difference. But if you are sharing a pew, uh, go a long way around and then uh, return back to the pew. Uh, Going this way. Don't go down the main aisle to return to the pew. Go, go the long way around.
Let us pray. Be graciously present, be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have in view with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we had our uh, parish council's uh, meetings uh, again. If anybody would like to uh, watch what was uh, said and the questions that were asked, uh, we do have it on the YouTube. I did record it. It's three hours long. That's the bad news. It's three hours long. But uh, you know, a lot of information was passed on. And as I said at that parish council and all parish council meetings, I don't know any of us around here that would have thought that this thing would have went on as long as it has. As I said at the parish council, I was expecting to be, what, two months, three months? Now we're heading to four months. And uh, it is. I know a lot of us are having the attitude of, let's just get it over with, Father. Enough is enough. Let's end it. Well, we live by the bishop's rules, not our rules. And so we have to follow the guidelines. And to that, uh, I bring this up. Uh, uh, we had a conference with a bishop, and I, I was kind of saying the same thing you were saying. And I'm getting kind of tired of this bishop, especially when it comes to hospital visits. Uh, I was telling him that, you know, again, Bishop, remember, Avera is the, the Catholic hospitals. And I, as the priest, need to be able to get into the hospitals. And it's expected that I be there. And I'm getting a lot of resistance. I am getting resistance from administration. And so he did call up Avera and uh, set down some guidelines. Those guidelines are in the bulletin. However, it is going to be very strict. So I'm, I'm asking you to do remember, if you will, that uh, how it works right now is uh, they limit the number of visitors you can have uh, in the hospital. So uh, you have to uh, basically have only one visitor per day. The priest can be your visitor, but it requires that you request the priest to be there for that day. And, uh, and it is, it's kind of, and when it comes to uh, end of life issues, then you're allowed two visitors, but then only two visitors, and you can allow the priest to be one of those visitors. So it is, it's very, very strict. But this is the way the bishop wants us to go with it. So what I'm asking you to do now is be proactive. Be proactive. Uh, don't just assume because it's a very Catholic hospital that they'll just open the doors to the priest. It just it won't work that way. So uh, you need to, uh, if you are going to go in for a procedure or for an operation or uh, something that that is, you know, I'm not talking about a hangnail. I think we all know that or, a, you know, cold or something like that. But, but at the same time with the coronavirus, we don't want to guess at it either. So give me a call. We'll have the anointing of the sick before you go in for the operation here at the